All right, here we go. We're going to look at our first unit, our first lesson in our first unit, and we're going to look at points, lines, and planes. There's actually several different learning goals that we have to go over in this lesson. So the first one is to understand and use the basic terms of geometry. Then we're going to understand how to use the correct naming conventions, that means the way we name things, and the correct labeling for two-dimensional and three-dimensional figures. We're also going to be able to identify and describe relationships of figures in two-dimensional and three-dimensional space. And we're going to understand and explain and apply four of the basic postulates in geometry. So let's begin. OK, so there's three undefined terms in geometry. And the first one is a point. And if you think about a point, the reason why a point is called one of the undefined terms is it's really hard to define precisely. We could say, like, the tip of my pen is like a point, but where exactly is that point? So one of the ways that we define point is we say it has no dimension. It's infinitely small. We also try to talk about a point as a location in space, a very, very specific location in space. Um, it has no length, no width, no height. That's what we mean by it having no dimension. So when we're working in geometry, we always represent a point with a small dot and a capital letter. So here you can see um, we represent a point with a small dot right and we always name a point with a capital letter so here we have a single point and that would be point A if I wanted to add some more points to the page I draw a dot and I label it capital B okay no big deal so we'll go over the questions that I have on the left in class tomorrow but I've got two here so think about some questions that you think should go in the left hand column of your Cornell notes Okay, the next undefined term is a line. We say that a line has one dimension. It has one dimension because it extends in two directions. So it has length, that's its dimension, but it has no width, no height. We represent a line with two arrowheads. Um, that means we, when we draw a line, what we're going to do is we're always going to you know, try to draw a straight line there. We always put arrowheads at the end so we know that we're actually talking about a line. When we name a line, we have some choices. The first choice is that we can name it with two points on the line. All right, so that number here is two. It's not three, it's not four, and it's not one. It's two, it's always two. So in this particular case, we could name this line uh, line AB. And the notation that we use, first we write our two letters, AB, and then we use the teeny tiny little arrowhead at the top. That's how we know it's line. It's a line and not something else. Of course, we could also call that line BA. Sorry, it's a little messy. Um, and that would be the same line. It doesn't matter which letter comes first as long as there are two points that are actually on the line. Now a second way that we have for naming, naming lines is to use one small italic letter that's got to be written near the line. So in this case, that letter is the letter M. So I could also call this line M, and I'd usually write it like in cursive or something that makes it look, ital look Italian, italic. Excuse me. This is great for when you have several lines that you're drawing. Maybe I have one here. Maybe I have one here. It's just a real quick and easy way to name each of your lines. So maybe I call this line M and that line N. And I don't have to put points on the line and I can easily name it. Okay, the last of the three undefined terms is a plane. And we say that a plane has two dimensions. Right, the two dimensions that a plane has, think about what they might be. It's like a flat surface, so it might have length and width, but it doesn't have any thickness or height. So think about a table or a floor or a wall. 
some sort of very, very flat surface, but then you have to imagine that it extends forever without end. All right, so when we name a plane, this is really important because there's a few different ways that we can do it. The first way is to name it with three points that are on the plane. Okay, you have to make sure that you're positive that those points are actually on that flat surface and not somewhere else. But not only that, those three points are not on the same line. They can't all three be on the same line. They have to kind of form a triangle. So if you look at this example of this flat surface here, we can see points C, D, and E are all on the plane. So I could name this plane C, D, E. C, D, E. I could also name it plane B, C, E. Again, the order of the points doesn't really matter. Now sometimes you'll see a capital letter usually in the corner of a plane, like we see the letter M here. Usually it's going to be in the corner. And when you see a capital letter like that, that's like the name of the plane. Just like my first name is Kathleen, my son's first name is Calvin, the letter or the name of this plane is plane M. So that's the last way that we could name this particular plane, is we could call this plane M. And we'd use, of course, the capital letter there. All right. So now let's do a few more uh, vocabulary words in geometry. The next one is collinear. So look real carefully at what words are inside the word collinear. See this word right here, line? All right, so collinear means two things that are on the same line, or two points that are on the same line. So collinear points have to all be on the same line. So for example, we can see that L, M, and N are all on that second line here. So we could say L, M, and N are collinear points. Of course, the opposite of collinear would be non-collinear. We could say, for example, that O, M, and N are non-collinear because they form like a little triangle. All three of those points are not all on the same line, so those are non-collinear. Coplanar, in a similar way, are points that are on the same plane points or lines um, that are on the same plane. So if we look at this example again, we could say, for example, that point C, point A, and point B are coplanar. But those aren't the only things that are coplanar. Can you see how, um, what if I drew like, let's get a little tool here so I can do a really good job. What if I drew a line that kind of went this way? Let's see. I'm going to extend it a little bit here if I can. So it goes through these two points. I'm just going to fix it just a tad. There we go. And I'm going to fix the end because I really want it to be accurate. I want that to be an arrow. So here, can you see this little new line that I drew? The line BC. And we have the line CA. Even though they're extending outside of that little part of the picture, we still say that line BC and line B or excuse me, line BC and line AC are coplanar. Remember that plane extends forever in all directions. So that plane really contains both of those lines. So here we could say that line BC oops, get my little arrows there and line AC like that are also coplanar. Um, in this particular case, however, line QB and line AC are non-coplanar. QB is coming like this, AC is coming out like this. 
they're not lying on the same flat surface and they can't lie on the same flat surface. So those would be considered non-coplanar. All right, so we have a few postulates. We haven't talked about what a postulate is, but a postulate is something that we believe is true, but we can't really prove it. So you might want to write that down in your notes. A postulate is something we believe, but we can't prove. We'll talk more about postulates in class, because um, there's a lot of important ones in geometry. One of the main ones in what we call Euclidean geometry, which is the geometry that we study, is that parallel lines never intersect. Um, we can't really prove it because we can't ever really get to the end of a line because a line goes on forever and ever and ever. Uh, for example, here's another one that we can't really prove, but we believe it's true because it's convenient for us and it allows us to prove a lot of other things. Um, so here's postulate 1-1. One, one. Through any two points, there is exactly one line. So in this case, we would say, like, through the points P and Q, there is only one line. In this case, it's line N. So you might say N line N is the only line through line P and line Q. This is actually really important. We'll talk about this in class. Why do you think it's so important to say that there's only one line that goes in between those two points? Think about that and be ready to discuss it in class. Alright, so I want to review a little bit about graphing. Because I think graphing actually illustrates that last idea we just talked about. If I want to graph the lines um, in the coordinate plane, there's a couple different things that could happen, right? The lines could go like this, and they could intersect. The lines could go like this, and they could be parallel. Or they could actually be the same line and be sitting on top of one another, right? Those are the only three things that could happen when you graph two lines in the coordinate plane. So uh, let's graph the first one here. You can see that it has a y-intercept of positive 8. So let's plot that point. And it has a slope of negative 2. So remember that means go down 2 over 1. And I'm going to plot a few more points that are on the line here. A bunch more. I think the more points you plot, the more accurate your line is going to be. So do three, four, five, six points when you're drawing your line on your graph, okay? So let's see, I want this line to go through these points. We want arrows. We'll do that, and we want it to be red. All right. So now, this line is going to look just like that. We'll just adjust the top just a tiny little bit. So it actually goes to that point, that intercept of eight. Alright, so let's check out the second line. The second line has a y-intercept of negative 7. That's way down here. And it has a slope of positive 3. So that means go up 1, 2, 3, over 1. Up 1, 2, 3, over 1. Up 1, 2, 3, over 1, 1, 2, 3. One more for good measure here. And then we'll graph our line. Okay, so choose our color. We want blue. And we want arrows. Okay. Always make sure that when you're drawing a line in geometry, you put arrows at the end. So, oh, whoops. Hey, what happened to my line? That's not cool. Alright, we'll just have to draw this and then try to fix it. There we go. What to do with a mouse, you know? Okay, so let's do the last part here and make it blue. Alright, so there's our two lines. You can see that our two lines intersect right here at the point 3, 2. That's their point of intersection. 
Now this example is actually kind of important because it illustrates the idea of this next postulate, which says if two lines intersect, then they intersect in exactly one point. Now that word exactly is actually really important in math. It means they intersect in one point and one point only. Not zero, not ever two. If they intersect, they have to intersect in only one point. Okay, let's go on. Our next postulate is kind of difficult to visualize, um, but we'll talk about some real life examples that might help. The, la the next postulate, postulate 1 3, says if two planes intersect, if they intersect, if they meet, then they will intersect in a line. This is really important. Not part of a line, not a segment, not just a little piece, not just points, but an entire line. Remember again that this plane here continues out in both directions here. It never ends. It's a flat surface that keeps on going. And the same is true of this blue plane on top, right? It's a flat surface that keeps on going. So if those planes keep extending out like that, their intersection is going to extend out as well. So you can see here, let's, let's say we put a, put a name. Um, let's call this plane M. And we could call this plane N. We could say planes M and N intersect in line ST. And we don't have to write the word line because we're using the symbols to indicate that ST is a line. Okay, so I've got one more postulate to talk about with you. And that's 1, 4. 1, 4 says through any three non-collinear points there is exactly one plane. So remember what non-collinear stands for? Not on the same line. So here we can see point C B and A, or the points A, B, and C, they kind of form a little triangle, so they're not sitting on the same line, so we call them non-collinear. And anytime we have three non-collinear points like that, I don't care where they are, there's one flat surface that'll go through them. So here, that flat surface is plane T. We could also call it plane ABC but there's only one flat surface that could go through all three of those points at the same time. All right, so that's the end of what we need to talk about um, for this section. But what I want you to do is go back, fill in your questions, and then we'll compare them to my questions later, and do a two to four sentence summary uh, for the notes. Bring your notes back to class, and we'll use them to complete some of the exercises that you're going to work together with some partners in your group. Okay?